page 50, Watchman's Song. This has four sharps in it. It is in the key of E major. You need to be able to do the scale, the E major scale. I'm going to do my video on E major scale. Two octaves up and down. It wouldn't hurt to do the C sharp minor scale also. That also has four sharps. Cut time. Now when I approach a piece of cut time, I automatically just put it in 4-4 until I learn it and then we'll put it back in cut time later. So I'm going to pretend it's in 4-4 time where a quarter note gets a count. When I approach a new piece of music I like to do it one hand at a time. The videos, these videos last forever. So I'm going to, in order to shorten the video, I'm going to try and talk about both hands here. But so hopefully we can get it that way. At the beginning of this, you're playing in octaves. As it's not bad. Watch this fingering. You have a five, four, and then you're changing both hands. Change fingers here, like that. That's fine. Play this now in the right hand. Do the second finger on the G sharp. So we're we're connecting that, and then. Fourth finger on the F sharp. Two. They're doing a one three, one two. I like to do a five one, and then a two three, or a two four. You decide how you want to finger it, but just be consistent. And that is, once you decide on what fingering you want to use, pencil it in if it's different than the book, and stick with it. So, I mean, these fingerings in the book are all suggestions. The fingerings I give you are all suggestions. Ultimately, it's up to you on how you finger it. So, the, in the last two measures of the first line here, I'm going to go here is a 2 4 here, and in the left hand, it could be here or here, either one, here or here, and here. You see, the articulation is a portato. So we don't have to have an absolute little legato. We try and get it as best we can. And that's fine. For me it is, huh? And then again, going up. Again, the fingering. Watch the fingering. It's, they say one. I do two. I do two on both. Just, and then a three here. A thumb here. And then a th here. One. Five. See if you have really fat fingers and all, and you can't, that doesn't work. You got to do this. Then this. That's okay. You can you can do that because if you have really big hands, they're big enough to do that too. So it's a two, three, and then a one, four. That's okay. Otherwise, use the fingering in the book is one five. And then here, hold these half notes down. on third line it gets a bit tricky here right hand that B is tied you don't play it again you just the G sharp is on the beat so it's and then you're holding that down as you play that there are different ways of figuring this I did I do a two on the F sharp it's not big enough for that. You got to use thumb on all those, but it's up to you. Again, the B's tied. Hold these. Hold the whole quarter notes down. It's here. So like that. fingering as you had up above, more or less. Hold the half notes down. Now let's go on to the second line on page 51. This is the intermezzo part of it. You're here, and then all, all of these notes are on one beat. So it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This fingering, not this, this, and you're not really fingering these, you're trying to blue, it's not, 
rhythmic, although I think it should be. You're, you're, you're just rolling up and down. It's, it's like a rolled chord. Or you're not trying to do it rhythmically. You just roll it. Well, in this case, it goes up and then back down. Take it. So it's... all in one beat. The kicker is finish it so that the next note is in time. In other words, there's no space. I don't need this. Uh-uh. It flows into it. It's, it's, it's like this is part of this. I have to experiment with the timing on that. And then going on this is a triplet. So it's one, two, three. This is an E minor triad here. And I'm just going here. This is the, this is it. And I'm just, that's all it is. So here. So, so the left hand's just helping out with the third note. And go, same thing in the next measure. They're not triplets. And the whole note you can do any way you want. They're showing it split up between the hands. Where you can do here or here or play it all with the right hand if you want. I mean, you can do that. Because the left hand's got to go down here for the F. But I'll leave that up to you on how you split that whole note chord out up. And then the, the next, uh, and the F is the same way, you're here, here. It's here. It's, it all has to flow. And again, triplets on four, four and uh, And this, again, this is a, it's an F. It's They're saying thumb on that C. The idea is we got to go down here. Now the left, the right hand is going to catch the chord here. So just work those out very slowly, and then have, you repeat that, and then go on. And the last part of it's the same as the first part. Now the dynamics and the pedaling. Let's cover all this together, kind of combining it. When I'm learning it, I wouldn't do that. I'd, I'd do the either the pedal or the dynamics first and then the other one but we'll just do it together you can watch the video more than once the soft at the beginning no pedal until you get to the half note and when i do use the pedal i always put that notes down first and then the pedal i want to start the sound first before i release the dampers is the idea so it's here softly now here release it on the quarter note after you play the quarter note, lift the pedal up. No pedal on this. Now here, release it on, on the quarter rest. Everything up together. Here, push the half note down first and then the pedal and lift it before you do the quarter notes. So there's a, a phrase, a new phrase. pedal the quarter notes. It's like a portato built in. You don't have a choice. Here and then lift it up on the B3 where the rest starts and don't pedal this next line. And you can go up now. I suggest on the, the they're not real clear with the dynamics. I suggest you crescendo up to a moderately loud. Don't get loud here too soon. Just moderately loud. So you come down, start this about moderately soft or soft. Now you're moderately loud. Now you're soft. And this is all the voices. You play them all about the same here. It's, it's a... Now come down. Just, you you they don't even don't really need a day crescendo there. You're ending a phrase. Just come down off a phrase. You end the phrase a little softly. So a little louder. Not up 
back to moderately loud again. They don't say how much, you just judge it. And there's a little poco rolling tondo there. You slow down just a little bit, not much. And then pedal the half note and lift up on beat three there. Let's go on the second line. You're gonna pedal this, and it's very soft here. This can be moderately soft around in there. Lift it up before you play the triplets. And you crescendo up to loud. Now, I think that's an error in the music. I think you should pedal that whole note. I would pedal the whole note. Add the color to the whole note. One of the uses of pedal is you would tend to pedal the long notes to just give them a little more depth. So here we just pedal it. And then the next line is again moderately loud or so and very soft. Now we come up to of a loud. See now they're telling you to pedal a whole note. Well, I think you should pedal the other whole note. And you lift up before you repeat or whatever you're gonna do and then the rest of it's the same except for the last line. Let's go down to the last line at the bottom. You're getting louder in here. Moderately loud is all. I mean this isn't like the intermezzo part. This is a different style. We have two different styles thing. There has to be a contrast. We don't really get loud on this part. We get loud on the intermezzo part. Like at the end of the second line there. We get loud there. Not on this part. This part is a little more subdued. So don't go up to about a moderately loud. And then this is legato pedal with a retardando. And you're going to decrescendo all at the same. Can you multitask? It's just. Now, I disagree with their pedaling indication here. Because what they're telling you to do is this in the last two measures. Silence but between the measures. I just I think that's rather unmusical. I, I, music, in my opinion, needs to flow, and I would di not disconnect the end like that. I, it needs to flow through, flow all the way through to the end, not come. Now I wouldn't put a break in there. I disagree. I would I would make that little upbeaty arrow thingy between them. It's my opinion. All these pedaling indications are opinions. You have to decide what sound do you want. But I would encourage you not to pedal it unless you have to. Because people, they just automatically pedal everything and not worry about it. Just blech. It takes all the character out of it. So just pedal it sometimes.